Welcome to this special monthly basic training video. In this video, we will take a look at the new Pierce Enforcer engines that have been designed and acquired by the department. The new Pierce Enforcer engines have some significant changes from previous generations of engines used by Montgomery County. Our goal for this presentation is to help familiarize our personnel with these changes and to give a quick overview of the new rigs. Some of the major differences on the new engine companies include a shorter wheelbase, an all-new air priming system. There is no compressed air foam system, or CAFs. There's also no onboard Class B foam tank. Lower hose beds. A different supply hose configuration. And different attack hose sizes and nozzles. During this video training, you will learn about these differences and some operational best practices for these new engines. Like the Crimson engines, these new Pierce engines were designed to have uniformity in configuration and equipment to ensure department-wide consistency. This provides simplicity and practicality for drivers working in different stations or battalions. Built on the Pierce Enforcer chassis, these new engines are powered by a Cummins L9 turbo diesel, coupled to an Allison 4000 EVS 5-speed automatic transmission. Note, these units are governed at a maximum speed of 68 miles per hour. A change from the older model Crimson's, but like the EMS units, these engines are equipped with a diesel particulate filter and require diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, as well as intermittent regeneration cycles. For detailed mechanical aspects of the new rigs, head over to the driver training webpage. With a shorter wheelbase and lower hose beds than the previous generation of Crimson's, these units stand 9 foot 6 inches tall, 8 feet wide, 30 feet 1 inch long, and weigh in at approximately 39,900 pounds, with a gross vehicle weight rating of 47,800 pounds. The Pierce engines have a 750-gallon water tank and are equipped with a single-stage Hale Q-Max pump, rated at 1,500 gallons per minute. Similar to the Crimson's, these units also have the Hale Total Pressure Master, or TPM system. All three intakes have relief valves set to 125 PSI. The two LDH discharges on the officer's side do not have discharge pressure relief valves. A new innovative feature to these engines is the Trident air primer system. The new engines, along with the new brush engines, and Freightliner tankers will be equipped with this feature, which replaces the rotary vane primer from previous apparatus. The major difference with this new system is that the primer has no moving parts. It runs off the engine's air compressor and can be used continuously, not limited to the 45 seconds of activation, like the rotary vane primer. These units are capable of obtaining a 27-foot lift, and are faster than a rotary vane primer at obtaining drafts less than 15 feet of lift. These units do not have calves. When foam solution is called for, the new engines have a foam logics pump with a smart foam proportioning system designed for use with Class A foam. Fed by a 50-gallon onboard Class A foam tank, the new Class A foam system is a simplistic way for companies to choose the appropriate amount of foam for various responses they may encounter. Unlike the Crimson engines, when the pump is placed in gear, the foam pump does not automatically turn on. This must be done manually at the pump panel. In order to operate the system, the operator must first turn the system on by pressing the Home button which will take the user to this screen. And from here, the operator will select the desired incident type, which has a defaulted foam injection rate pre-programmed into the controller. 
Once the desired operation is selected, the screen will change to this. From there, the operator can monitor the activity and modify the concentration as requested by the officer. The foam system must be shut off from this screen. Unlike the Crimsons, the new engines do not have an onboard Class B foam tank. Instead, the department has equipped each unit with four 5-gallon buckets of Class B foam, which are located on top of the apparatus in the area of the deck gun, just above the pump panel. In the event of an incident requiring the use of Class B foam, companies will need to assemble the Class B foam system, similar to the Crimson's. Except the foam inductor will be placed into one of the five gallon buckets, which needs to be relocated to the ground in the area of the pump panel. The department has purchased some special nozzles, which are specifically designed to match our foam inductor flows of 95 gallons per minute. These nozzles are kept in the large appliance compartment on the driver's side along with the new air aspirators which need to be installed on the end of the new 95 gallon per minute nozzles, as shown here. For quality finished foam, the same rules apply as before. The maximum length of attack line is 200 feet past the inductor and the line should be pumped to 200 psi to properly pick up the foam concentrate from the bucket. The Pierce Enforcers do not have a generator or an inverter for electrical power, as found in previous apparatus. All onboard electrical equipment is 12 volt and rated to run off the power produced by the diesel motor. Additional information regarding the mechanical aspects of the new engines can be found on Quick Links via the Driver's Training section. With the new pierces come some significant changes to the hose load packages. We'll take a look at these changes starting with the supply package. The new supply lines chosen for the engines are the Mercedes Megaflow Breather 4 and 5 inch supply hose. The new pierce engines will be outfitted with dual beds of the Mercedes 4 inch hose. However, the driver's side supply bed is packed as a dead load of 800 feet and the officer's side supply bed will be a thousand feet of four inch hose connected to the humat valve. The clappered Siamese will be detached and it lives in the rear compartment under the hose bed. So what's the reason for the change? The original plan called for twin supply beds of four inch hose, like the Crimson engines. However, Due to the shortened hose bed, it was difficult to fit a thousand feet of four inch hose in the driver's side hose bed. Discussions occurred about switching to a single bed of four inch hose, but the need to lay dual four inch lines is very real in our urban suburban density zones, as we can expect to need maximum pumping capacity in those locations. Take the Upper Rock Fire, for example. Thus, it was decided a single supply bed was just not a viable choice. Using GIS hydrant location data, department leadership evaluated hose lay lengths in our urban suburban density zones and determined that most initial hose lay lengths are under 500 feet, with a small percentage just a bit longer, but a very few were over 1,000 feet. More importantly, the need for dual 4-inch hose lays made by first alarm companies almost always falls at or under the 500-foot mark. An 800-foot GIS hydrant map was generated to confirm the analysis and the decision was made that twin supply beds of 4-inch hose, each 800 feet in length, was suitable for urban and suburban operations. Thus, the 1,000-foot and 800-foot split bed configuration allows rural companies to still make an initial lay up to 1,000 feet without having to connect hose beds, and it allows urban companies to lay dual supply lines up to 800 feet in length. 
While the supply hose configuration on the new Pierce engine companies is different than what you may have been accustomed to with the Crimsons, the procedure for a forward lay is the same. The driver will stop the vehicle at the designated water supply location and move to the rear of the engine. Once there, they will remove the humat as well as the webbing loop attached to the 4-inch hose and wrap the hydrant in a safe manner that will allow the hose to pay out of the bed. Drivers should monitor the lay in their side mirrors to ensure the supply hose pays out and that it does not prevent access of incoming aerial apparatus. We'll take a look at establishing a heavy water hookup a little later in this video. The hose load changes to the Pierce Engine Companies will require a change of practice when responding to a rural structure fire assignment. Drivers and unit officers will still follow the IRP for tactical decisions, but the way in which the supply line is laid has slightly changed. The driver will stop the engine at the starting point to their supply lay. They will move to the rear of the engine and, once there, they'll open the rear compartment, retrieving the clappered Siamese, and place it at the layout point. The driver will return to the rear of the engine and select the 1,000-foot bed of 4-inch supply hose along with the humat valve. The humat will be laid and secured near the Siamese. The driver will return to the cab and begin their forward lay into the scene. In the event the lay is greater than a thousand feet, the driver will stop the engine and connect the first bed of 1,000 feet of hose to the second bed of 800 feet of 4-inch hose, and then continue the forward lay. Per the IRP, the first two tanker and second two engine will co-locate with the first two engine down the lane, or driveway, as space permits. The second arriving tanker and all other water-carrying apparatus will pump the clappered Siamese when they arrive on scene. This is accomplished by disconnecting the humat from the thousand feet of four-inch hose and connecting it to the clappered Siamese laid down by the first two engine. The first arriving water carrying apparatus will pump this clappered Siamese until their tank is empty and then report to the fill site. All drivers should communicate when the supply line is ready to be charged. The new Pierce engine companies will come equipped with a 30 foot section of 5 inch soft sleeve stored in the rear compartment under the hose bed and pre-connected to the rear intake. This is where the driver will also find the 4.5 inch national standard thread to 4 inch Stortz adapter. The engines also come equipped with a pre-connected 50 foot section of 5 inch soft sleeve stored in the pump panel tray on the officer's side. In accordance with the IRP, companies may utilize either the rear or officer's side intake with the pre-connected 5-inch hose to fulfill the requirements of having your own water supply. It is still a requirement to dress out the hydrant for heavy water hookup. The options to do so are as follows. Option 1. When positioning short of the hydrant by no more than one pumper length, the driver can first use the pumper's officer's side pre-connected length of 5-inch hose to connect to the hydrant's steamer outlet. This should be followed shortly thereafter with the driver connecting a red length of 4-inch hose from one side of the hydrant's 2.5-inch outlets to the pumper's driver's side intake. Remember to place a control valve on the hydrant's 2.5-inch outlet before connecting the 4-inch hose and charging the hydrant. Option 2. When positioning past or beyond the fire hydrant, again, no further than one pumper length, 
the driver can first use the pumper's officer side pre-connected length of 5 inch hose to connect to the hydrant steamer outlet. This should be followed shortly thereafter with the driver connecting the rear pre-connected length of 5 inch hose to one of the hydrant's 2.5 inch outlets. Again, remember to place a control valve on the hydrant's 2.5 inch outlet before connecting the 5 inch hose and charging the hydrant. The execution of option 1 or option 2 both meet the operational definition of the MCFRS heavy water hookup. All new engines will come outfitted with new Mercedes Kraken XO attack hose in inch and a half, two inch, two and a half, and three inches. The attack package is completed with Elkhart Chief XD nozzles. This attack package was evaluated and chosen based on our departmental policies and operational needs. The Pearson Forcer engines come equipped with two crosslays and four attack lines off the rear of the unit. We will take a quick look at each line and some real numbers obtained flowing water from engine 722 at the training academy. The following engine pressure values and flows are approximate. Companies are encouraged to flow test and train on the lines with their assigned engine. Crews will find twin cross lays of red inch and a half hose, 200 feet long, with a 50 psi fixed gallonage breakaway fog nozzle with an integrated 7 8 inch slug tip nozzle. This line is designed to flow 150 gallons per minute when pumped at 130 psi. On the rear of the engine from the driver's side to the officer's side you will find the following. 300 feet of yellow 2 inch hose with a 50 psi fixed gallonage breakaway fog nozzle with integrated 1 and 1 8 inch slug tip. This line is designed to flow 250 gallons per minute when pumped at 190 psi. The next attack line is 300 feet of red inch and a half hose with a 50 psi fixed gallonage breakaway fog nozzle with integrated 7 8 inch slug tip nozzle. This line is designed to flow 150 gallons per minute when pumped at 170 psi. The next attack line is identical to the first 300 foot 2 inch attack line. The final rear attack line is 250 feet of 2.5 inch hose with a 50 psi smoothbore nozzle with a 1 and 1 quarter inch tip. This line is designed to flow 325 gallons per minute when pumped at 100 psi. In the rear compartment, personnel will find the RAM XD portable monitor. Though it's not pre-connected, the RAM is similar to the previous Blitzfire nozzles we are accustomed to using, with some operational differences. Unlike on the Crimson engines that were pre-connected to 2.5 inch hose, companies are encouraged to supply this device with 3 inch hose to maximize water delivery. The RAM is designed to flow 500 gallons per minute when pumped to a nozzle pressure of 75 psi. Also found in the rear compartment with the RAM are the stack tip and smooth bore nozzles for this device. Included sizes are a 1 inch tip, a 1 and 1 quarter inch tip, and a 1 and 1 half inch tip. The proper setup of this device should have at least 20 feet of straight hose in line with the device. Do not pretzel or use loops with this device. Remember to utilize the included safety strap to secure the device. Companies are advised to never pump this device greater than 150 psi or a flow greater than 500 gallons per minute per the manufacturer's warnings. Also equipped on the new engines are ground bases for the deck guns. These units are designed to be supplied by a single 4 inch hose in an inline setup in a similar method as the ram nozzle. This device is designed to deliver 500 gallons per minute with the 1 and 3 8 inch tip 
when pumped to 90 PSI. This concludes this special monthly basic training on the 2018 Pierce Enforcer engine companies that are going in service now. All companies should become familiar with these new units and how they may enhance your current operating procedures. As with any major change in apparatus and equipment, companies are encouraged to get out there and train on this new piece of apparatus to best determine your operations before the bells ring for your next incident. There is a great deal of additional information available on these units that can be found on the driver's training page. Head on over and give them a visit. Thank you for your time.